Okay guys, so because so many of us get confused with fractions, let's do this one with the fraction. Okay. Uh, the first step, as you can see on the wall, is to find the vertex. The vertex is a coordinate. You find that coordinate by doing x equals negative b over 2a. And when you use the formula, use parentheses instead of the b and the a. The a is 1 half, the b is 1, the c is negative 3. So the b value is 1, the c value is negative 3, we don't use the c value, the a value is 1 half, plug it in. And when you do the math here, x is going to equal negative 1 up on top, and the 2 times 1 half, if you do 2 times 1 half, half of 2 is 1. So your x value is simply negative 1. So your vertex x value is negative 1. You still need the y value, all you do is plug it into the original equation y equals 1 half x squared plus x minus 3. And of course, we're plugging in a negative 1 right in there on both parentheses. So when you go negative 1 in parentheses squared, you get a positive 1. And 1 times 1 half is 1 half. But you still have the plus negative 1. That's just the minus 1 and then minus 3. So if you do this on a calculator, or even in your head, half minus 1, that's negative half. And negative half minus 3 is negative 3.5. So the y value is negative 3.5 or negative 3.5, whatever you want to call it. Got that, Jose? So we're going to graph it, negative 1 on the x, negative 3.5 on the y. Check it out. Negative 1 on the x, negative 1, 2, 3, and a half on the y. It's going to be halfway down to the negative 4. And you put a dot right there. Second step to do when graphing is to draw your axis of symmetry right through that vertex value. Um, it would also be good to label it axis of symmetry. And we might as well get used to stating the equation of that vertical line. So the equation of the vertical line, the equation of the axis of symmetry is simply x equals whatever the x value of your vertex is. So x equals negative 1 is the actual equation that produces this vertical line. Are you with me? Yeah. OK. Now we need more coordinates. So we could go to an xy table and plug in some easy numbers right? that are pretty close to the vertex. It's really easy to plug in 0. Whenever you plug in 0, your output will be the c value on a standard form quadratic trinomial equation. So when you plug in 0, you get out a negative 3. So if you go to the coordinate 0 on the x, negative 3 on the y, it's down here. So that's kind of not too helpful because so far you just have this part of the parabola. And if you map that over to the other side, it's still, it's still a super tiny part of the parabola, right? So we need more values. So I could plug in another number like 1 or maybe two, or maybe three, or maybe four. I don't have to plug in a bunch. I just need to plug in a couple to get a good idea of what my parabola looks like. But let me ask you this. If I were to plug in one, guys, if I plug in one, we're going to end up with one squared with times one half. We're going to end up with fractions. If you don't want to deal with fractions, then maybe it's not a good idea to plug in one. Try plugging in two. Plugging in two will give us a two squared, which is four. And then one half times four. What's half of four? 2. So you have 2 plus 2, because we plugged in 2, right? 2 plus 2 is 4, and then 4 minus 3 is 1. So when I plug in a 2, I get out a 1, and that is a coordinate. Let's go to the coordinate 2, 1. Let's put a dot right there. 2, 1 is right here. Let me do it in blue better. And now we could connect this blue dot with that blue dot. And as you can see, we have a much better parabola now. Let's map this over. It's three units away from the axis of symmetry. Go one, two, three units this way, and you'll have your mapped over coordinate, and you'll have a very nice parabola right there. You don't really have to do much more than that. You could plug in another number if you want. You could plug in a four if you wanted to. Plugging in a four is probably going to give us a value somewhere up here, right? But I already have a good parabola right there. So that's graphing it. We could also state some important facts about this parabola. Uh, we already said that the axis of symmetry is the equation x equals negative 1. But we could also mention 
about the y-intercept, what's the y-intercept going to be? Zero comma the c value negative three. Remember the y-intercept, to find the y-intercept, we have to set x equal to zero. That's what you need to know to, set the, to find the y-intercept. And if you do set the x is equal to zero, you're going to get the c value as your output. So when, when you set the x is equal to zero, your output's negative three. And as a matter of fact, you already have it graphed. You could clearly see it crosses at negative three. So the y-intercept's negative three. But algebraically, the y-intercept's always going to be the c value. What else could we say? We could say that the domain is x equals what? All real numbers. And how about the range? The range is y is what? Up, which means greater than or equal to whatever the y value of your vertex is. Exactly. The y value of your vertex is negative 3.5. So uh, that's, that's this lowest point down here, right? The whole graph is above this negative 3.5 value on the y. So over here, we need to say y is above that negative 3.5 value on the y. So we've stated everything about this complicated looking parabola, which ends up being not so complicated. And of course, all this math you could do on a calculator. Are we good? Or should we try this other one that has a fraction? This vertex, this one's actually interesting because uh, the vertex ends up being off the graph itself. You guys want to check that out? All right, check it out. Vertex. We're going to do the formula, negative parenthesis over 2 times parenthesis, A values negative 1 third, B values 2, C values 3, plug in 2 for the B, plug in negative 1 third for the A. So right here, our X is going to equal negative 2 up on top divided by, when I multiply 2 times negative 1 third, I will get negative 2 thirds. So I really have a negative 2 up on top divided by a negative 2 thirds on the bottom. And that's confusing because it's written a fraction within a fraction. But if you wrote it horizontally instead of vertically, you would have, let me rewrite it, negative 2 divided by negative 2 thirds. Now dividing by a fraction is really multiplying by the reciprocal. So you really have negative 2 multiplied by the reciprocal negative 3 halves. And we know that a negative times a negative is a positive. And we know that when we multiply a fraction by the denominator, this 2 and that 2 will cancel out. So you really end up with x being positive 3, luckily. So our vertex x value is 3. To find the y value, we plug it in. So we have y equals negative 1 third x squared plus 2x plus 3, where our x value is 3 in those parentheses. And when we do the math, you could do it on a calculator. I want to go right here, 3 squared, that's 9. So I really have negative 1 third times 9, uh, plus 2 times 3 is 6, and then plus 3 at the end. Now when I do negative 1 third times 9, that's going to be a negative 3. So I have negative 3 plus 6 plus 3. So my final y answer, y value is going to be 6. That's right. So y equals 6. My vertex y value is 6. So the coordinate is 3, 6. That's the most important point. And when we graph 3, 6, we're at 5, we go 1 off the graph. And that's kind of bad. That, I messed up. I should have given you a bigger graph. But anyway, there's our vertex, the coordinate 3, 6. That's our vertex. Second step on graphing is to draw the axis of symmetry going right through that vertex all the way through. And then after that, you need more coordinates. So I'm going to use an XY table. So which is an easy number to plug in? Probably the easiest number to plug in for X. What's the easiest number to plug in? Zero. zero. Because when you plug in zero, no matter what, the zero here squared ends up being 0 right here. 2 times 0 ends up being 0. The whole thing's 0 except for the c value. So whenever you plug in 0, you get out your c value, which happens to be 3. 
So if you graph that 0 on the x, 3 on the y, you get this coordinate right here. And if you map it over to the other side, 1, 2, 3 units away, 1, 2, 3 units away, you're one unit off of your graph, but that's OK. I'm just going to map it over here. And let's actually draw a parabola. Now, I see some people do this. That's not good. That's like a triangle, right? Or it's like a perfect corner. What we want to do is make it a U-shaped curve. So you want some type of curve to be more accurate. So go ahead and like kind of curve it like that. Put some arrows. Curve it like that. So that's a good parabola right there. Now, of course, you could plug in more points, but that's already a good drawing. It's pretty big. That's about it with regards to graphing. But we could state other things like the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept? Three. Three. OK, we already knew that. It's actually that coordinate that we already had. You could even see that it crosses the y-axis at 3. We could also state the domain. What's the domain? X equals, x equals all real numbers. And the range. Range is what? Positive. Y is, is less, than? less than or equal to. Why is it less than? Because it's opening down, right? Six. Yep. The y value of the vertex 6. So we stated our domain. We stated our range. We stated our y-intercept. Uh, what's the only thing we could say, state extra? How about the axis of symmetry equation? Now, I already know that this is the axis of symmetry, that green vertical line. But what's the equation of that axis of symmetry? Anybody? If you want an actual equation that produces a vertical line, it's going to be x equals whatever that x value is. What's the x value? 3. Right, the x value, here's your x axis, it's at 3, it goes right through 3. So x equals 3 is the equation of the axis of symmetry. I mean, it's easy to draw it, you just draw it right through the vertex. But to label the actual equation of the axis of symmetry, you say x equals whatever the x value is, which is 3. And that's all we could state. I mean, that's as hard as it gets. Okay, cool, we're done.